Hey, what's up guys? So have you been curious how radar detectors work? Or maybe even how police radar guns work? Are you curious what the difference is between all the different radar detectors on the market? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about all of that. This is gonna be your crash course into radar detectors. Think Radar Detectors 101. <laughs> So jumping right into things, when police officers are out looking for speeders on the road, a lot of times they're gonna be using a radar gun like this. They can just take their radar gun, point it at traffic, and the radar gun is gonna be displaying the speeds of the traffic up ahead. Now radar guns can be handheld like this, they look like a gun and they hold them out. These are gonna be good for stationary operation. Plus, police officers also have dash mount versions of their radar guns that are installed in their vehicles and they can use these both when stationary or when driving. Dash mount units can be used with just front facing antennas or with a second rear facing antenna so they can monitor in both directions. Then once a cop finds a speeder, they'll go chase him down and write him a ticket on the spot. Now there's also new photo radar systems that are coming out that behave a little bit differently. These are typically automated systems to where the officer doesn't chase down the speeder to give him a ticket and instead they just take a picture of the car and they mail them a ticket that way. Now I'll talk about photo radar more a little bit later here in this video, but either way when it comes to radar, the idea is when an officer or anybody is running radar really, some of the signal is actually going to bounce off vehicles up ahead, but really the vast majority of it is going to continue traveling down the road and that's where things get really useful for us. See, the idea here is radar guns are typically going to be picking up the vehicles that are closest to the police officer. However, we are going to be able to pick up their radar guns well before we're in range of their radar guns. And that is why they call these radar detectors. They're not police car detectors, they're radar detectors. And so if an officer doesn't have a radar gun in their car, if they don't do speed enforcement, there's nothing for your radar detector to pick up on. Additionally, if the officer has a radar gun, but they're not actively using it, again, your detector is not gonna go off. When they are doing speed enforcement and using their radar guns, yes, your detectors are gonna work great in that situation. And I find officers do this all the time running radar when they're out looking for speeders. Now, besides police officers with their radar guns, there's actually a couple other sources of radar that you'll see out on the roads too. For example, you've got automatic door openers in different shopping centers and grocery stores. You've got speed signs on the side of the road that display your speed, but don't actually issue tickets or anything. And then you'll also see a lot of newer cars have uh, in-car collision avoidance systems such as blind spot monitoring radar. This can also cause our radar detectors to false alert. And it's for this reason that a lot of detectors actually have some false alert filtering. It's designed specifically to filter out these sources of non on police radar. The idea is we want our detectors as much as possible to alert to police radar while filtering out this non-police radar or what we call false alerts. Uh, no detector is going to be able to do this perfectly and completely, but better detectors and newer detectors are designed to actually filter out more and more of these sources of false alerts. And with that said, let's go ahead and start diving into some of the differences now between all the different detectors that you'll find. The first difference, and one of the most important ones, is going to be detection range. Detection range is actually going to vary quite a bit between different detectors and even with different terrains. We find that in easy situations like long flat roads, for example, radar signals can travel for miles and miles. And so you could pick up a radar signal 10 miles away or longer. In tougher terrain where you've got hills, mountains, curves, and trees, these things can all block and absorb radar signals so you'll get much less range. You may get maybe half a mile or a quarter of a mile or less. And then one of the big differences you'll find between maybe entry level detectors and higher end ones is that the cheaper ones will do fine in the easier situations, but they're really going to struggle once things get a little bit tougher. While the higher end detectors are going to be able to protect you in not only the easier situations, but also in the tougher situations. Another big difference that you'll see between detectors is their abilities to filter out blind spot falses or those in-car uh, collision avoidance systems we see in a lot of newer cars. Older detectors weren't designed at all to filter these out, while new radar detectors are definitely getting better at being able to do this. Again, no detector can do it completely, but we're definitely seeing improvements in this area to help keep detectors quieter. Next up, there's also GPS available now in many detectors, and one of the biggest benefits of GPS is having additional false alert filtering. For example, those speed signs or those automatic door openers we talked about, those are stationary false alerts that are always in the same location, and because of that, a lot of detectors now can use GPS to learn this false alert in this location and filter it out and mute those alerts so you don't get alerted every single time you come by. Some detectors will require you to manually teach the detector where all the false alerts are, while other detectors are able to automatically learn these false alerts after you pass by them several times. We call these manual GPS lockouts or automatic GPS lockouts. Now GPS can also be useful to filter out a lot of false alerts that the detector hasn't learned yet. If you're driving around town at low speeds, you may pass a drugstore on the side of the road that can set off your detector, and your detector can just activate its low speed muting and keep the detector quieter uh, when you're driving slower. 
Plus, the GPS can also be useful to help filter out things like red light cameras or speed cameras that are also in the same location. As you approach those, you'll get a notification from your detector's GPS database. And so if you do any driving around town, I would definitely recommend opting for a detector that has this GPS capability built in. Next, let's talk about photo radar. We're seeing this crop up more and more all around the country now. Now, one of the tricky things about photo radar is they're kind of doing some things to try and defeat radar detectors and make it more difficult for radar detectors to pick up on. And for that reason, you're actually gonna want a newer detector that has uh, special photo radar detection capabilities built in. These are kind of lower powered radar sources, so you're gonna be getting less detection range, and you do need a detector that's specifically designed to pick these up. And so a lot of the newer detectors you'll see now from like Uniden, Redenso, Escort, a lot of the big manufacturers, they are designed specifically to detect a lot of these sources. You'll see names like Multiradar CD, MRCD, uh, there's MRCT, Gatso, Redflex, etc. All these different names are just uh, different uh, photo radar systems that are in use. Next, let's talk about radar bands. Now, you'll see this advertised with different detectors alerting to different bands or detecting different bands. The idea is radar signals, a lot like the radio in your car, they can transmit at different frequencies, a lot like you can listen to different radio stations in your car, right? Radar guns, in the same way, simply transmit at different frequencies. The different bands that we have, we've got three of them here in the US. There's gonna be X-band, K-band, and K-A-band. Now, X-Band is going to be kind of older technology at this point. They've got big, huge antennas, and for the most part, X-Band has been phased out all throughout the U.S. It is still in use here and there in the country, but for the most part, you won't see this for anything except maybe uh, some automatic door open or false alerts in your detector. So most people actually turn off X-Band altogether. Next, we've also got K-Band. K-Band is actively used all throughout the country. Officers definitely still do run K-Band. There's also gonna be a lot of false alerts on K-Band because K-Band is also used by automatic door openers, uh, speed signs, blind spot monitoring radar, etc. There's a lot of sources of K-Band radar. Some people for that reason actually like to disable K-Band detection altogether. I generally don't recommend it unless you're really sure that officers don't use K-Band in your area, especially because they still do use it throughout most of the country. And so for that reason, it can definitely be worth your while to get a detector that has a good K-Band filtering. Finally, we've got KA band. This band is highly used by police officers all throughout the country. This is the newest technology. You've got the most compact antennas for officers, and this you'll definitely see used nationwide. Additionally, KA band false alerts are really, really rare. It can happen occasionally, but for the most part, if you see a KA band alert, it's almost always gonna be legitimate. So definitely pay attention if your detector goes off to KA band. Now there's also KU band that you may see advertised. It's used overseas in Europe, but it's not used here in the US and it's not actually gonna be coming here. But you may see some manufacturers kind of advertising KU band, but nothing to worry about here. Now, speaking of which, I've also noticed some detectors, like some of the Cobra brand detectors may advertise detecting all 14 bands of radar or 17 bands or 19 bands. There's only three bands that are in use, X-band, K-band, and K-A-band. That's it, there's nothing else. That's mostly just a marketing thing that you'll see on kind of some of the lower end detectors to try to make themselves sound better. But in reality, there's just X, K, and K-A, that's it. Speaking of which, you may also see things like a 360 degree detection advertised with different detectors. This is also kind of nonsense. You wanna know a fun fact? Every single radar detector can detect radar in all 360 degrees. They can detect signals coming from the front, from the side, or from the rear. Radar, I mean, it bounces. I mean, they can pick up signals coming from behind, plus those signals that uh, go up ahead are gonna bounce back into the front of the detector. That's the whole reason officers use radar in the first place is because it bounces and reflects. And so yeah, you're gonna be able to pick up radar signals coming from any direction. More sensitive detectors, of course, are gonna give you longer range, but every detector is technically gonna be able to do this. Now, something to point out though, is you'll actually see some radar detectors that have not just one antenna, but two. Every detector is gonna have one front-facing antenna to pick up signals, but some detectors actually have a second antenna that points out the rear. And having the second antenna is gonna allow the detector to actually point point towards the alert to let you know if that officer is up ahead or if he's back behind. This can be really useful information so if your detector goes off, you're not just looking around wondering where the heck the officer is, you know exactly where he is. And so the arrows can be really, really useful just to give you that added level of situational awareness. You don't necessarily need it. If the detector goes off, of course, you can just slow down. But I find the arrows definitely are helpful just to give you that extra information and let you know if the threat is up ahead or if it's back behind and maybe you've already passed it. 
Next up, we can talk about Bluetooth. A lot of newer detectors now have Bluetooth built in that allow the detector to connect to your cell phone and run an app and add some additional functionality to your radar detector. The idea here is it can do things like, let's say maybe your detector doesn't have GPS built in. It can use your phone's GPS and an app running on your phone to then add back in all those useful GPS features that aren't built into the detector. Additionally, you can use your phone to go in and maybe change settings in your detector, which is a lot easier to do than just going into the detector's menu and updating it directly. Finally, some radar detectors can actually connect to the cloud using your phone and share alerts in real time with other drivers to give you an added layer of protection. It's a lot like running Waze on your phone, except it's just a little bit more automated and it's another source of uh, uh, cloud sharing alerts. I've done a whole video about this recently that kind of compares it, but that's the general idea. Finally, radar detectors themselves, they come in two different form factors. You've either got uh, windshield mount radar detectors like this that are designed to just attach directly to your windshield and you plug them into a cigarette lighter or maybe hardwire them into your fuse box. Additionally, they make special custom installed radar detectors that have special waterproof housings like this. Different manufacturers make them. And then you're going to get a separate controller and display that's installed cleanly somewhere in your vehicle. Now, most people opt for the windshield mount version because it's quite a bit cheaper. It's going to be a much better bang for the buck compared to something custom installed. But custom installed is really nice if you don't necessarily want a box hanging on your windshield, so you get a cleaner looking install, plus there's nothing visible to thieves or to law enforcement. Additionally, custom installed radar detectors can also typically integrate with different laser jammers to give you both radar and laser protection. Now, one of the downsides, though, of custom installed radar detectors is that they tend to be quite a bit more expensive than your windshield mount variants. Additionally, you also have to factor in installation. You can do it yourself if you're handy, but a lot of people wind up hiring a professional, so it's going to take additional time and money to get everything professionally installed into your vehicle. Something else to consider is then uh, eventually, maybe later on down the line when you want to upgrade, it's also much easier to go and upgrade a windshield mount detector, just pop it off the windshield and pop another one on, as opposed to custom installed, it's going to be a lot more involved to upgrade down the line. But that's definitely a really popular option uh, if you want something really nice and clean and integrated in your vehicle. Boiling this all down though, kind of the main differences that you'll see in detectors, especially between kind of uh, entry level detectors and then your higher end detectors, come down to two main differences. Number one, range. Cheaper detectors are going to be fine in easier situations, but they may not alert in more tricky situations until the officer already has your speed. They may not actually provide any useful advanced warning in more difficult situations. Higher detectors are going to do better in both easier situations as well as in tougher situations. And so that's typically the main reason why a lot of people would want to opt for one of those. The second main difference that you'll see is going to be the false alert filtering. Cheaper detectors don't have as many false alert filters and their filtering isn't as good. Whereas higher end detectors typically have more filtering options and better, more effective filtering options. And so range and filtering are the two biggest differences you see besides the other things like arrows, Bluetooth, etc. Next, what about laws? Are radar detectors even legal in the first place? Yes, here in the US, they're legal almost everywhere. They're only prohibited in Virginia and Washington, DC. Penalties there, they're under $100 if you get caught using a detector there, and they don't confiscate your detector or anything, so penalties are pretty minor. They are also prohibited, though, on military bases, in commercial vehicles over 10,000 pounds, as well as all vehicles over 18,000 pounds. Otherwise, yes, radar detectors are legal nationwide. If you go up into Canada, radar detectors are only legal in three provinces, British Columbia, Alberta, and Saskatchewan. Everywhere else, radar detectors are banned. And so with that said, if you're looking for a radar detector yourself, head on down to the uh, video description. I'm going to have a link to my radar detector recommendation guide on my website, where I go over all the top radar detectors available at different price points with different feature sets so that you can find the best detector for you. There's no one detector that's best for every person in every situation, and so that guide is specifically designed to help you find the best detector for you. Yeah, there you go. This has been your crash course into radar detectors, going over all the basics and the fundamentals. I know there was a lot of information, right? Crash course here. <laughs> so if you have any questions, please feel free to ask down in the video description. Uh, additionally, if you want any personalized recommendations or support or installation help, you can always schedule a private session with me over on my website. I'll have a link to that down in the video description as well. And so with that said, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribed if you haven't done so already so you can stay up to date with more videos that I continue to post just like this. Thanks for watching. Hope you're doing well, and I'll see you in the next video.